Hey YouTube, it's Robert back with another video and today's video is going to be a crash course on engineered wood flooring. So for any of you that are getting ready to go out and shop for floors and you're considering wanting to put real wood floors down, then this could be a great video for you because I'm going to give you all the basic elements that you need to be looking for when going out and searching for a wood floor. Hopefully help you determine if A, this is in fact the right product category for your next remodel and B, what some of the pitfalls that you want to avoid are. And some of the specific things to look for would be. So as with all my videos, I'm not endorsing any particular brand. I'm just strictly trying to bring you guys some of the most important information that you need when you go out and start doing your shopping. I will be using some of my own products uh, as examples, but no, I'm not being paid by any of these manufacturers to talk about their products, and I'm not giving any specific endorsements today. I'll strictly just be covering some of the features of these floors in general. Again, my name is Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. So before we jump into all of the information today, if you do me a huge favor and just hit the like button for me, at the end of the video, comment down below because I always leave stuff out and usually you guys are really good about putting some questions down there and I do try to get to those as quickly as I can. And then be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me in the future. So first thing, when it comes to purchasing real wood floors, uh, one of the common misconceptions with engineered wood flooring is that somehow it's not a real wood floor. And this comes from the fact that we can purchase real wood floors in a couple different formats. The first being a solid wood floor, where we're dealing with one solid piece of wood from the top to the bottom of each one of the planks. And engineered wood flooring that we're going to be talking about today is a different format. Traditionally, we're still talking about a product that is 100% wood from top to bottom, but Unlike the solid wood floor where we just have one solid piece, with the engineered wood flooring, we're dealing with a product that features a cross-plied construction, very similar to plywood, where we have a uh, piece on the top that would be our aesthetic selection where we're talking about a maple or an oak or a hickory or whatever it is that's giving us the style and the color that we want. And then underneath that, we have individual plies that are run in a cross-plied construction. So each of them is running in a different direction and that makes up the rest of the plank. Okay, so what's the reason behind engineered wood flooring? Well, primarily it's gonna give us a more stable product than what a solid wood gives us. A solid wood floor is able to move as one piece. So when we have temperature and humidity changes, things that create expansion and contraction, uh, make a wood want to warp or bow, a solid wood is going to be more susceptible to that than what an engineered wood floor is. And the reason is because with engineered wood flooring, having each one of those plies running in a different direction, they're all wanting to move differently and they basically start to fight each other and create more stability than if you had one single piece that's able to move in whichever direction that it wants to. So the engineered format is a more stable product for temperature and humidity swings uh, and just the expansion and contraction that naturally occurs in every home. One of the other reasons that we use engineered wood flooring a lot is depending on the part of the country that you're in and the type of subfloor that you have. Solid wood floors are very, very common on the east coast uh, and in a lot of homes that have wood subfloors where we're gonna nail in that solid wood piece to a wood subfloor. Now out here in Arizona where I live and in parts of the country that feature a lot more concrete slab foundations, there's very limited circumstances that you can glue a solid wood floor down. Um, there's a lot of times specific types of products in solid woods that we use, very specific adhesives that can be used for that, but traditionally we're not typically gluing down solid wood floors. Where engineered wood flooring is designed to be glued down to a slab and the glue itself has a moisture protection um, that you know, prevents the moisture that comes up through the concrete from damaging the wood. So it's really important that we use the right adhesives when we're installing this floor. Uh, but upstairs we can still, uh, instead of gluing it to a wood subfloor upstairs, we have staples that we usually shoot in for this product. Uh, and then you have a roofing paper type material that becomes the moisture barrier underneath for an upstairs application. 
Uh, but that would be a couple of our biggest differences between the engineered wood and a solid wood floor as far as the properties and the reasons that we would choose one over the other. And another term I want to familiarize you with is the term pre-finished wood. So whether we're talking about a solid wood floor or an engineered wood floor, generally the majority of what you're looking at is going to be a pre-finished product, meaning it is done the day that it arrives at your house in the box. There's nothing that you need to have done where you lay it and then you have somebody come in and sand your whole floor down and then put a stain and a finish on it. You're coming in and you're selecting a product in the store and you're picking the specific color that you want and that is what's going to show up on your doorstep and you're not going to have to do something to achieve that look. Uh, so with solid wood floors, we do have a lot of products that are unfinished where you're just buying the raw wood and then you're responsible for having somebody sand, stain and finish it once it's been installed in your home. These products, they're being installed and then when it's done, you have your final cleanup and that's it. So the products that we're gonna be looking at today are pretty much all pre-finished. Now, some feature a different type of finish than others, but it's not something that you have to worry about sanding, staining, and finishing when it's done. One thing to definitely be aware of though, when I say pre-finished, and I mean that what you order from the display is gonna be what shows up, you do have to remember you're looking at a natural wood floor. So when you look at samples like uh, what I have here, just because I see a certain color palette in here doesn't mean that that's all that I'm going to be getting when it actually shows up. The whole purpose of buying real wood floors is to get the natural beauty that real wood provides. So you really have to understand and appreciate that the variation that the wood flooring you purchase has is not going to be limited necessarily to just what you see on the sample that you picked from. All right, hopefully you guys are staying with me so far. I know that this can start to get pretty technical and we're gonna get even a little bit more technical here when we start talking about how hard the different species of wood floors are. And that's often something that comes up uh, with clients that are looking for wood floors is not only are they trying to determine which species they like the look of, but they also oftentimes are concerned with, well, how hard is this wood floor? How well is it gonna hold up to dents and scratches and things of that nature? Uh, and so one of the terms that comes up quite often in that is the Jenka test and the Jenka scale, which is specifically designed to help us determine the suitability of different species of woods for flooring. So originally that test was basically a measure of how much force it took to embed a steel ball that was about a half inch in diameter halfway into the different species of woods that they would test. So they would drive that ball halfway through its diameter into the wood and measure how much force it took them to actually do that. That would determine how hard each wood species was, which is great when we're looking at how hard that top layer is, but if we were to drive that half inch steel ball into this product, we're gonna be hitting other species of woods. So it's a little bit different in terms of the hardness on these type of products than when we're dealing with a solid wood floor. That's why it's really important to know that our manufacturer is using additionally hard lumber for their applied constructions and they're not chintzing out on us with softer lumber choices to create the rest of that board. Um, and then we also now have products that don't use 100% plywood underneath the veneer of the wood, but maybe use a HDF laminate core, which can still be a very solid and very stable product. And then I even now have products from companies like US Floors that use their waterproof core underneath a real wood veneer. And so we have different versions of the engineered ply construction, but when it comes to the hardness of the overall floor, that Jenka scale does not apply the same way that it does when we're dealing with a solid piece of wood. And one other thing to keep in mind with that Jenka scale, as we go up the scale and we start dealing with harder and harder woods, they will be more dent and impact resistant, but they're also going to be more susceptible to checking, uh, which is when the wood starts to dry out and it actually starts to split. Because the harder the wood, the less it naturally is gonna be able to absorb moisture. And if we aren't keeping our temperature and humidity levels in the range that the species of woods are comfortable with, then we do have more potential for it to dry out and start to split. And each manufacturer provides information in terms of what the relative humidity levels of the house need to be, but generally that's in about the 30 to 50% range, which 
for a lot of parts of the country is very, very unreasonable to keep unless you're bringing in an in-house humidifier and really working hard to monitor those things. It doesn't mean that if it goes outside of that, you have guaranteed failure of your floor, but it does mean that if your floor was to fail, you're not gonna get help from the manufacturers because they're not. that's not a product failure, that's an environmental failure. And so when you're looking at the warranties offered in different floors, you need to be aware of what those warranties cover and what they don't. When it comes to how well a wood will hold up against not just dents, but also scratches, the Jenka scale and the hardness of the wood species is one part of it, uh, but that's really more for the impact resistance. As far as the surface scratching, uh, that's gonna come largely into play with the finish that's applied to these products. And as I mentioned before, we're dealing with products that are pre-finished engineered. So that finish was applied in the factory. It's not something that you have to worry about putting on it at home. So the vast majority of the wood floors that you're gonna go out and look at are gonna feature some type of a polyurethane, uh, an aluminum oxide finish to protect them from the scratches. Uh, some products even feature what we call a ceramic bead finish. And these products can be very, very resistant as far as protecting your wood floor from your surface scratches. And regardless of what type of finish that you put on an engineered wood floors, you really do need to understand when you're looking at the wear warranties and the guarantees that the manufacturers are giving you in terms of the quality of their finish, that's applying to your normal traffic, your normal day-to-day -day wear. That does not apply to things like dragging a heavy armor across it and that gouging into the wood floor. That's not gonna be a warrantied item. So there's certain things that you have to understand are considered normal and then other things that would be considered abuse. Uh, the other thing you have to understand with wood flooring, it's not so much a question of if you're going to damage or scratch it at some point, it's more a question of how and when it's going to happen. And that's kind of part of the beauty of a natural wood floor is you're going to add some character to it over time of your own. So if that's something that you're not okay with, then again, wood floors might not be the right product for you. And if you do want a real wood floor, but you're really conscientious of the scratching and things, then I suggest you go with something that's not a high gloss, very formal looking wood floor. I would go with something that's a little bit more of a natural wood floor, maybe already has some chatter marks and some other types of character to it that make it look a little bit more beat up. It's kind of like going to the store and buying a pair of jeans that's already got some holes in it or paint stains on it. Um, you know, some of these jeans you go and you pay $100 for to look like you wore them for 10 years. Well, that's the beauty of it is if you add another hole of your own, it's just going to look like it was designed that way. When we deal with engineered wood floors that already have a little bit of some characteristic and the hand scraping and some of the things that are made to, to already give this wood character, what you add to it down the road isn't going to seem as out of place as if you buy a floor that's perfectly smooth, has like a piano type finish to it, and then you start to scratch and wear down that wear layer over time. It's gonna be much more noticeable on those. And another point I wanna to touch on in terms of adding character to it and it looking different down the road is I have a lot of people that come in and then they say, well, you know, when that happens, can I refinish it? How many times can I refinish it? And for the most part, I tell people on these engineered wood floors that are pre-finished in the factory, you're never gonna refinish that floor. It's really, it's not a good idea to go into it with that mentality because you're gonna lose all the characteristics that you paid for when you bought this floor to begin with. And the other thing is, a lot of these products have such a high grade of finish that are put on them now that they really can't be sanded down and refinished in the home the way that you can a solid wood floor. In some cases, you end up damaging and burning the wood when you're dealing with having to sand through that finish, you, you get the grit of that sandpaper so high that to actually get through the finish, you end up damaging the wood. So it's just not something that you really wanna go into with how many times can I refinish this floor because for the most part, I would say none. And that's a very expensive process to do. So if you're going in day one with the mentality and focus of refinishing it down the road, again, wood floor might not be the right category of flooring for you to be looking at. Now, an option for those of you that are looking at engineered wood floors and would like the ability to kind of keep that wood floor looking the same or even better over time would be to go with a oil finished floor. And I actually have an example of one here from Hallmark that features a new oil finish. But oil finished floors, there's still a pre-finished process in the factory where they apply a UV cured oil to these products. But over time, 
you have the ability to actually re-oil the floor. So there is a level of maintenance involved in the reapplication of that oil, but the really cool thing about it is uh, your polyurethane based finishes, those are only gonna get duller looking over time as that finish wears through. Where with the oil, you have the ability to actually revitalize the floor, and in my opinion, a lot of those floors look better over time. Now the oiled finish generally isn't going to be quite as protective as some of our aluminum oxide based finishes are, but the beauty is that if we do get a scratch, our options for repair are a little bit greater because we have, we have better access to that wood and we can apply that new oil and in some cases those scratches almost disappear, um, but it just it's a floor that in my opinion can actually look much better over time with the reapplication of that oil. That's something that we could find in a product like this Hallmark. Um, du Chateau is another great example of a brand that deals with uh, the oil finished floors. Um, so it might be something to look into if you're okay with having a little bit more maintenance involved with the floor, but the trade-off being that you have a little bit more natural beauty um, in the oil finished appearance, as well as a little bit more flexibility in terms of long-term ter long care and maintenance of that floor. And since I mentioned care and maintenance, with wood floors, for your day-to-day -day care, you could take a less is more approach. So I don't recommend getting the string mop and the bucket of water out because a lot of these wood floors will still be damaged by excessive moisture being brought in on a day-to-day -day basis. And if that's something that you're consistently doing in the cleaning, you're more likely to create issues for your wood floors. And yes, there are wood floors now that are engineered with a waterproof warranty where you could use that, but you still don't really need to. So you get your microfiber cloth mop attachment and your recommended wood cleaners. And on a day-to-day -day basis, that should do what you need it to do. Um, as well as, you know, just light vacuuming uh, over the surface with a hard surface vacuum. And what I would most emphatically tell you in terms of care and maintenance is stay away from adding any type of product to your wood floor that's designed to make it shine more. Uh, stay away from your mopping glow, your Murphy's oil. Do not try to change the look of the floor that you bought to add sheen to it because those products are just going to build up a film over time. And I cannot tell you how many people I've had come to me and ask me how they get that off they're telling me, oh yeah, my floor used to look you know, real shiny and now it's got this dull, hazy look to it. And then I find out that they were applying Murphy's oil to it for years and they've just got such a buildup that they, they almost can't get it off. Or it's just a really, really difficult process to try and remove all of that buildup that they've been applying to it over time. So stay away from trying to change the look of the floor that you purchased uh, the way that it was. I will attach some links down in the description below to some products you can purchase on Amazon that are just kind of your general wood floor cleaners. Um, so as opposed to it being specific to any particular manufacturer, these will just be more of a one size fits all approach. That's just kind of your basic daily cleaner type products. I'd rather start you there and not start looking for anything that's, you know, some industrial grade designed by NASA type of products. You don't need those. So always start with your most simple approach and then slowly you can start to be a little bit more sophisticated if you're dealing with a specific issue um, but you know approach that with extreme caution so that you never risk doing anything that might create irreversible damage to your floors all right so I know I just flooded you guys with a lot of information and I could spend a lot more time talking about wood flooring and the different species and styles and all the options that come from one brand to another but I really wanted to try and keep this video as condensed as possible for you and just give you some of the absolute basic fundamental things to know about engineered wood flooring so that you have the firepower when you go in and you start shopping to ask the right questions and know some of the things to look for. Inevitably, I do always forget something that I really wanted to mention in these videos. So please comment down below with anything that you want clarity on or have additional questions on and I'll try and get those answered for you. If you found this video helpful, and I sure hope that you guys did, hit that thumbs up button for me. Again, comment down below with any of your thoughts and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future. Again, my name's Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. So until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.